Hello guys, you might have seen this Reddit post about Laravel going potentially in wrong direction. This is number one upvoted post of all time on Reddit Laravel. In this video, I will share my opinion about it. And after reading all those almost 500 comments, the main two topics to talk about are these. Starter kits, so what they are, why they are the way they are, and what happens with older starter kits like JustRim and Breeze. And another question that rises up is about paid things inside of starter kits. Again, we get back to starter kits. So WorkOS AuthKit and Flux UI are optional things, but within starter kits, which are paid options. Free for limited usage, but then you may have to pay for them. So some people think that it's related to Laravel investments and investors, and we'll talk about that later in this video. But for now, starter kits. But before we move on, a few disclaimers. First, I planned this video for a week already, so here's my tweet where I promised this video, but I deliberately was postponing that until we have some feedback from Taylor and the team, some responses, some new updates to starter kit themselves, and generally emotions would die down so we can talk more rationally. And second disclaimer, I'm trying to be unbiased as a journalist. I don't take any sides. I don't want to blame anyone or criticize criticize anyone too much. I'm trying to be better at phrasing things, even if I don't like certain decisions, but I will try to paint the bigger picture of what was released, why, in my opinion, and based on official tweets from Taylor and the team. And also, third disclaimer, the overwhelming amount of reactions are positive about Laravel launches, including starter kits. Here's a tweet as an example. So that Reddit thread, as much popular as it is on Reddit, it represents a really small amount of developers, but I do understand what they're saying, their pain, and I do want to express and emphasize their opinion and also reply to them with logical explanations. So a short reminder, in Laravel 12, we have three new starter kits, React, View, and Livewire. So those three are released instead of JStream and Breeze. And that instead of is hugely important because the most criticism about those starter kits are not actually about new starter kits. It's about how do we use the options that were available previously. So the actual problem, in my opinion, is how they released starter kits and how the official team communicated about older starter kits or in fact, they didn't communicate at all. Because on the official page of starter kits, JStream and Breeze are not mentioned. In the docs of starter kits, you don't find JStream and Breeze at all. If you go to the official GitHub of Laravel Breeze, the readme is gone and the link leads to starter kits version 12. And the only place I found some information in the docs is in the release notes, which of course everyone should read for Laravel 12. There's one paragraph with the introduction of new application starter kits, Breeze and JStream will no longer receive additional updates. Now imagine what happens in the mind of people who were using JStream and Breeze for all their new projects and now suddenly they wake up to this. Their beloved starter kits, which were official just a few days ago, now no longer will receive updates and the new starter kits are more complex and take some time to learn. But good news is that Breeze and JStream will actually still be supported. So if you go on the repository of Breeze and go to releases, there is a release to support Laravel 12. Same for Laravel JStream. And even the older Laravel UI bootstrap older starter kit now supports Laravel 12. So technically, that isn't an issue. You can still use Breeze and JStream in Laravel 12 instead of starter kits. Again, the problem and the confusion is about communication. It's not anywhere in the official docs. It is communicated on Twitter and Taylor and the team actively replying to tweets. So this is one example. He replied that they added support to Laravel 12 for JStream and also they will support it beyond Laravel 12. So there will be JStream and probably Breeze on Laravel 13, 14 and so on. So generally Laravel as a team has a history of still supporting older semi-obsolete packages like did you know that Lumen is still supported? Also I've showed example of Laravel UI but they are supporting it silently. And this may be the main reason of confusion. And actually I've seen the same pattern somewhere. 
five years ago, I was actively participating in the drama or debate when Laravel 8 released Jetstream. And here's the Taylor post on Reddit when he was still active on Reddit. He's not anymore. But this drama over Laravel 12 starter kits reminds me so much of that time when Jetstream kind of killed the old Laravel UI and bootstrap. And even then, the problem was not Jetstream. The problem was how they communicated about the release and how immediately Laravel UI became not recommended solution anymore, although it was recommended and official just days before Laravel 8 release. So the change was pretty sudden. That was the main reason of that negative reaction. And I would rephrase that change into the fact that they changed the default recommendation of tools for the framework. And people are really sensitive to the default recommendations or default values in any code or package or framework. But Laravel historically had a few good examples of changing the default, one you can see on the screen. So remember when they changed MySQL to SQLite in the default in the .env. Same happened recently with PEST. Best became the default choice of the framework. But the difference is that they just changed the default values in Laravel installer or .env, but they still left the other options available and easy to configure. In this case, starter kits became kind of before and after. So if you just read the documentation, there are Laravel 12 starter kits and previous starter kits, which are not recommended anymore. So in my opinion, maybe a better choice would be to still remain with Breeze and Jetstream as options in Laravel installer, or at least officially communicate about them more, that Jetstream and Breeze will be supported, will be available, and people can still use them. But also a great job by Taylor and the team is in replying to the feedback. For example, on Twitter, Taylor went and explained a lot of things about starter kits and also told the roadmap that the things that were missing in the new starter kits will be implemented. So two-factor authentication teams, API starter kit, and also he explained why there's no separate blade starter kit because he considers Livewire to be that version. Technically, you can debate that and I will shoot separate video trying to use Livewire starter kit with blade and we'll see what happens. But Taylor is actively replying and communicating. And for example, Friday release last week was about making Vault optional in the Livewire starter kit, which received a lot of criticism on that Reddit post and elsewhere on Twitter. So Taylor quickly released the new installer with that feature as optional. And then on top, Beyond Code with Marcel Posiot released the update for Laravel Heard to support that new installer, and in fact, even making Laravel installer upgradable separately without Laravel heard new versions. And just 18 hours ago, they also released the update to Laravel.com homepage. There was some criticism about scrolling that is kind of too flashy. Now I want to quickly talk about the choice of Laravel starter kits, why React View and Livewire. In my opinion, Taylor and the team, they're trying to be visionaries of what is popular in modern web applications. So modern web applications, not websites, need to be dynamic. So they need to have some kind of dynamic elements. And then what are the choices on the market? React, which is the first in this list, is the most popular JavaScript framework worldwide. Under the hood, it uses ShadCN library, which is also very popular worldwide. So Laravel with starter kits, they are trying to move with the trends that are currently popular and will be popular for foreseeable future. But in fact, they released starter kits not with the most popular features only, but also they have options for view and for people who don't like JavaScript, they have Livewire. So it's not one starter kits changing the direction of Laravel. It's three options. Of course, ideally, it would be 17 options for all possible stacks for everyone to choose from. But still, three options for this starter kit is pretty impressive and I think underappreciated by people who criticize them. But speaking of options, let's briefly touch on those two things, Work OS AuthKit authentication and Flux UI as a paid option. With Flux, practically, I will play around again. As I said, I will release separate video on Livewire Starter Kit. But generally, the logic is this. Caleb Porzio agreed to open source some of the components, 
which were paid previously. So these are good intentions from both Caleb and Taylor. What other library would you have chosen for UI for Livewire, if not the official from Livewire Creator? So from that point of view, it does make perfect sense. But actually, if you have tried Livewire with another UI kit or UI library, shoot in the comments below your experience. And with AuthKit, with WorkOS authentication, Taylor tweeted about it after receiving the criticism. Some people think that there is some kind of partnership, but generally Taylor just tried it, he liked it, and he coded on a plane, on a flight, that optional integration with WorkOS. But that doesn't mean that they will not support Socialite, Fortify, and other ways to authenticate. For example, again, in the reply tweet, Taylor said that they use Fortify and Laravel Cloud so it won't be deprecated or obsolete. In fact, here's that story from WorkOS founder angle. So he didn't even know that Taylor was building that integration. He wanted to ask Taylor if he'd looked at it, but by that time, Taylor had already built it. So there's no commercial intentions here. Taylor literally wanted to ship an optional convenient way for companies with projects that require SSO, login with Google and others, and they needed to ship it quickly. And the final point in this video that I want to make, so with all that drama and negativity about starter kits, people understand starter kits in a different way sometimes. So here's my tweet where I reply to the person's question. Some people think or interpret that starter kits are everything. So you install starter kit and that becomes your application. No, in fact, if you are creating a bigger application, starter kit will be like 1% of your code. And even then, since new starter kits are not in vendor, they are Git clonable repositories, you can change pretty much anything inside. So in short, it's free, optional, and customizable. So all in all, people telling that Laravel changed direction just because of starter kits, in my opinion, they are totally overreacting. Laravel as a framework didn't change any direction. In fact, Laravel 12, as I've shot a video previously, it's one of the most boring versions ever. No new features, and that's great news. And now we have Laravel Cloud, also soon we'll have Laravel Nightwatch. So yes, you could say there's a new direction in Laravel, but that's additional direction, B2B sales and more new tools and kind of new waters, but that's in addition to our beloved framework, which stayed the same. The old packages will still be supported, maintained, and you can still use Breeze, Jetstream, Laravel UI, Fortify, Socialite, and others. And as I said, also, they will be iterating on feedback and improve things as we go in 2025 and beyond. What do you think? A bit longer video, but I've shared my opinion. What is your opinion now? Is Laravel changing direction? In my opinion, totally not. What do you think? Let's discuss in the comments below. That's it for this time and see you guys in other videos.